Good morning, everybody. I want to do a little video. I'll turn on a little light here so everybody can see me a little better. <coughs> it's still a little dark out there. Uh, I'm going to read a little bit to you where I left off yesterday in Ephesians. I do a live video, you guys, but I want to get down the road, do some driving here. And uh, I, I love doing the live videos, you guys, and it just makes me, it's harder for me to get. Um, I like to do them, so it's it's hard for me to shut that down when I want to keep doing it. Anyhow, um, I also want to mention before I get going here, Tom L. Christian. I watched his, I watch his videos and channels and stuff, but anyhow, um, I had uh, noticed that he was making a mention of the people that were dupl you guys see that spirit duplicating um, us and uh, trying to deceive people further. Okay. Now, there's a reason why they're doing it, I believe, is because the time is short. So they're going to do whatever they can do desperately to uh, try to confuse the body of Christ. Um, I don't know. They pick certain channels that they want to do this to and do what they're doing. Um, but either way, you guys, I don't bother going after other people's channels, picking them. and uh, Nor do you really hear me recommending anybody. Um, I may tell you whose channels I'm watching or I've been hearing or seeing, but I don't recommend anybody. Everybody can check it out for themselves who they really want to watch, you know. Yes, I do watch certain channels out there like Tom and um, um, Kim and, you know, there's certain people out there. I watch their channels. I, you know, just I watch them. But uh, not everybody. There's a lot of them out there I don't care watching. Um, you know what they say? Every picture tells a story. You know, you can see what's going on in a person's life. Um, if there's pride in it. You know, we have to use our discernment in, in this, you guys. But nonetheless, we're not going to spend our time poking and talking at other people. Instead, we're going to spend our time growing in the body of Christ. And believing in what the Word of God tells us. And, and doing what He tells us to do. Like in Ephesians, it says we wrestle not with flesh and blood. But uh, spiritual principalities, wickedness. In high places, they're in low places too. Okay? They're everywhere. But uh, also how it tells us to comfort and to edify one another. Okay? Edifying means we're going to be growing in the body of Christ. It doesn't mean that we're going to be, you know, yeah, that guy, <laughs> look at him, blah, he's the blah, 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 or that woman, she's blah, blah, blah. You know, that's not growing in the body of Christ. We, we want to be, you know, we want to be a member of Christ. And uh, they're, they're trying to cause a lot of division, you guys. Don't let that become us, okay? And you're going to see people out there, uh, my channel's got a lot of, uh, people trying to really mimic my channel and say they're me and then at the same time do stupid stuff, you know? But uh, somebody told me that that person that calls themselves a woman, Kitty Cat, is actually a guy. Now, I don't know, I'm not going to spend a lot of time doing this because, like I said, it's wickedness in high places and I don't like to waste my time with them. I'm moving on right now, you guys. Okay, I spent enough time talking about that and I don't like to. Now, this is where I left off yesterday is uh, the work in light of darkness, chapter 5. But I read all that and I left off at verse 22, chapter 5. Okay, an analogy of family and church. I'm going to read this and I also wanted to get into uh, 6. You guys, you know, we can read this and reread it and reread it. Have you ever, uh, like, watched uh, or read a book and then all of a sudden you come back and you read that book again and it's like wow you know you don't remember that part of it it's like you could always constantly be growing in this okay but knowing this world we're in right now this is all spiritual you guys it's very truly a spiritual battle I never dreamed in my life that they had this much control in this world over people and I believe the reason why we're seeing a lot of it now is because we're at the end times. It's like they're wicked. They, they're at the point where they're doing everything as fast as they can. They don't care. You know, some of us do notice it, okay? 
Because they know most people that are into this world, they're not going to see it. Because they're not taking a step back and looking going, whoa. Daniel 12.10 says the wicked will continue to do wickedly. And they won't understand. But the wise will. Okay, that's because we're more aware. This includes even a lot of churches. I just got through sharing with this lady in there. I didn't say all the churches, but a lot of them. Um lady in there told me, she goes, oh, I quit going to church years ago. She goes, yeah, I've been awake, you know, but not as, I, I opened her eyes even more. Um, I showed her those spirits going in and out, and you guys seen how that one in the beginning of the video, you know, I got them around me all the time. I got you guys wouldn't believe some of the stuff that I've seen, you know, and the, that's the Lord opening my eyes. Last night I had a dream. <laughs> Listen to this. I was exposing this evil and this wickedness and how it was getting into people's minds and it really wasn't them but the demonic spirit. And these women and men, they were all getting ready to go into, in like whoredom, and they were getting ready to go into a room and shut the door with the darkness. I jumped up there and I put my foot in the door where they couldn't close it. In other words, I was exposing the darkness, what was in there, wanting everybody to see it. You know, and that's kind of what I've been doing with this channel. I'm constantly wanting people to see um, what we're really up against here. Um, these spirits getting in and out of the body. You guys, it's very, very real. Um, the thinking. You have to be careful of all your thoughts and what you say. Now, that person yesterday came on and they said they were... Matthew or whatever and saying, you know, I'm not sure that was really even him. They said that I mailed him he's that I mailed him some pot, you know, and he's going, Thanks for mailing me that pot. Well, I'm not sure that was really him. You know what I mean? I really ain't sure. So don't take it upon yourselves to believe everything that you're seeing and hearing. Cause like I said, there's a lot of deception. People are trying to do stuff against me. Um, time, and they're probably going to be coming up against anybody that is doing right. So just know you can tell the demonic spirits the way they talk and stuff. Let's stay focused on them. That's what I'm doing. I'm focusing on them that are that are here um, doing their wickedness. Okay, that's what I'm focused on. When the rapture happens, you guys, we won't miss the boat. We All we got to do is be focused on the wickedness. We know who they are. Because remember what Jesus said. The wicked will continue doing wickedly and not understand, but the wise will. And the only way we're going to understand is if we focus on what they're doing. We're not following, but we know who they are and we're going to expose them. Remember that. We're here to expose them. Okay? Here we go. Analogy of family and church. Wives... Submit yourselves unto your own husbands. I like how they say that. Unto your own husbands. Not other people's husbands, but your own. As unto the Lord. See, that's what those spirits will do. They'll try to get women and men to uh, commit adultery. You know? Same like lesbians and uh, perverted people. You know what I mean? It's... Uh, when I say perverted, I don't mean it in a rude way. What I mean is it's unnatural. That's what I mean, okay? That's, I guess I could say it like that, you know, same-sex people unnaturally. Um, but some people, it depends on the tone, how they say it, you know, because there's a way of being ugly, too. And sin is sin in God's eyes. Remember that, okay? And hopefully we pray to God that some of these people will escape that because that's some powerful uh, stuff going on in their mind for them to be, you know, believing and following that. You know, that spirit, they have to really overcome that. You know, I've, and that's why I always share on here, I've been living in celibacy since my wife divorced me. It's been a little over seven years now. But I've been living in celibacy. It's not that difficult, you know. And the attacks, the stinking thinking, it's not our thoughts. It's theirs, you know. I don't play with it, though. When it pops up, I call on the Lord. I rebuke it, you know. It's some nasty stuff, man, you know. Sometimes I sit there and I'm looking and I'm going like, wow. This is like, this is 
unreal how it can get into your head and do what it does you know doesn't but we as long as we're aware and we know what it is you know we rebuke it in, in jesus name and it does flee from you you know that's exactly what it does it flees from you just like the word of god says but uh because they come in and make you do that stinking thinking, you know, it might even remind you of something you did in the past. Um, you just rebuke it and you say, Jesus, forgive me for that too. If it's something you may have forgotten, man, I, I, every day I'll say that to the Lord, forgive me for this too, Lord. You know, I humble myself before the Lord every day, man. That's what this does. It makes us, draws us closer to him. You know what I mean? So there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, if anything, it makes us know what would be wrong is if we listened to it and we did what it was doing, what it was saying. That would be wrong. But when it draws us closer to the Lord, wow, great. You know, it, it could be whatever you decide. If you decide to uh, draw closer to the Lord or if you decide to follow it. Remember, a lot of these people are under retributive minds because they love the lies. Okay. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. Amen. Therefore, we are the body, you guys. Okay? That's why I'm saying, you guys see me, I'm focused on this. I, I ain't worried about a rapture date. I really ain't worried about it because it's going to come. I know it's coming. And I know it's real close any time. And what I do is I go by the things that I'm seeing, like Jesus said, watch, like the scoffers, how they're coming against us harder. They're even making up channels like they are us. Um, that tells me how much close we are. Like those microwave towers I see being slapped up everywhere and anywhere as fast as they can do it. Um, that tells me any time, you know. The signs are out there, but you got to know what you're watching for, and you'll see it. Therefore, as the church is some subject unto Christ, so let the wives be their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Guys, yeah, I want to remind you also, there's not all churches are blind. There's probably some out there that are very wide awake. I just don't know where one is, you know. And you can go, I've been in a lot of them. And, uh, but they're not all asleep. You know, like uh, Charles Lawson. I've seen him on video, man. He's preaching to a whole audience out there. I'm sure there's more that know him just like him. They're right on the same speed, you know. Sometimes I think a lot of those churches I went to, the Lord sent me there, you know, to do what I'm doing. And it and it's it's very uh it's very depressing, you know, every time you walk into one and you see it's so dead. You know? I mean I've talked to people in there, everything, man, and it's like, oh man, unbelievable. You know? I but I've seen things even, you guys. I mean but like I said, it's not all churches. I don't want to get on like all the church is bad, you know, because they're not. That'd be like saying all people are bad, and they're not. All right. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever, see, that's what I'm saying about love, man. When we first loved the Lord, then we're capable of truly loving our wives, loving our children. When we first love the Lord, okay? Because that's when we be really begin to really know the true meaning of love. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourished the cherish and cherisheth it, even as the Lord, the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, 
but I speak concerning Christ and the church. I like that, how it says, this is a great mystery. You know, how the two join together and they become one, you know. But there has got to be love, you know, and you have to have love of Christ in you first. You know, for that love, like it says here, to really be in effect, you know what I mean? Both. That's why it says we have to be equally yoked. You know, if you're if you're a believer and your spouse is not a believer, boy, that could be rough. It could be very rough. That's why the Bible says we have to be equally yoked. You know. Nevertheless, let every one of you, in particular, so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. Now, here we go in chapter six. Children. Obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment, with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nature and emotion of the Lord. Now here where it says that it may be well with thee and thou mayest live long on the earth. <coughs> we're, you know, the Lord, when we're living according to the word of the Lord, you know, he wants us to have a long and good life, truly to live a good life. And he does want to bless us with things. But we have to know the difference of his blessings or is it the devil's uh, stuff? You know what I mean? Remember, the devil will try to lure you in too. But if you got Christ in you and you're following Christ, like you said, picking up your cross. You know, this one chapter doesn't leave out the rest of the book. This whole book, it's all combined. That's the whole thing of this. You know, when he says, pick up your cross and follow me or you're not worthy of me. All these things together. And if you're following Christ and he wants you to live a long life, um, you're going to do things according to glorify him on this earth and today that's not really what's happening i don't see it you know building these really big church preaching prosperity is not what um, they're so far off of the truth of things it's unbelievable a lot of these pastors and remember they they don't know what they're doing anymore they fell in with the love of money the greed of life and they their head they got lost in themselves Lear jets, come on, man. I mean, you know, anyhow, I'm not going to get into that either, okay? And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nature of the admonition of the Lord, teaching them about the Lord, you know. Servants, be obedient to them. That are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in singleness of your heart as unto Christ, not with thy services as uh, men pleasers. Now, here when he says servants, didn't he say Jesus Christ came here to serve, not to be served or anything, okay? And to be servants, you know, that's what a lot of us are. You know, I've always said it's good to be a, a waitress or a waiter, in your younger days, because it teaches you how to serve others, you know, how to be towards other people. There's all kinds of good things, man, that, you know, it's good for children to learn these things, you know, to, for later in life, you know. Life is short anyhow. It's very short. That's why it says that you may live a long life, but only according, if you're living according to the Word of God. You wouldn't want to live a long life uh, like of what's of the world, you know, like the devil, you know, lustful, and there's a difference, big difference. You guys know that. Now with thy service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good will, doing service. Enjoy it, you know, you got to enjoy it. As to the Lord. And not to men. It, it can. It can be very pleasing. You know. 
it's not that bad. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man does, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. And ye masters, do the same thing unto them. You see, kindness, goodness, you know, and things should be nice all the way around, no matter what. Forbearing, forbearing, threatening. Oh, Lord, you know, you don't want to be threatening people. Knowing that your master also is in heaven, neither is there respect of persons with him. All right, now, the whole armor of God. I'm going to read that one later on. You guys already know what that is, but I'm going to read that one later on. And I'm probably going to jump back into uh, chapter 1 on uh, Ephesians. Because like I said, I want to get into this a little bit more. Ephesians about the Spirit. And uh, look at it. It took almost 21 minutes to get there. Okay. <coughs> now, I'm getting back on the road, you guys. God bless each and every one of you. I love each and every one of you. How about that, man? The spirit showed up first thing this morning when I first started this video. But they're around us, you guys. It's not just me. It's you too. Okay? You guys know this. You guys have these, you hear these thoughts and this thinking, thinking. And sometimes it's really good. Sometimes we'll get those uh, really good thoughts, you know. And you feel good when you act on them. You know, when you do what's good and pleasing. Especially pleasing to the Lord. You know, and we don't do it to, uh, we do it because it feels good, you know, and it's got to be right. You know what I mean? <clears throat> like I said, I've got a habit. I'll probably be sharing with people when the Lord takes us out of here. I'll be doing it till the very end. I've got a habit of it. I told you I had a uh, um, dream where they said, Mark, we have different work for you to do. Well, I've got a habit of what I do. I can't stop it now. Um Everywhere I go, this is what I do. And uh, ever since I had my eyes opened up, boy, let me tell you something. When that lady said, Mark, we'll turn your life around. We'll make you rich if you speak less about Jesus. <laughs> boy, I wasn't even talking about it, but do I ever do it now? You know, that's all I do now. What she did was she let, she got me going, you know. Before I close off, you guys, I want to also let you know... Um, um, all those videos and stuff like that they're making, doing. I think that's like a last-ditch effort, okay? Just know it for what it is. And uh, and also, you know, I'm, I'm really focused on, on them, knowing what they're doing here and how they're trying to pervert and uh, lead us away. And that's why I keep saying we must be born again. In other words, we got to really know um, what time it is, you know, this, the churches fell asleep, you know, they fell asleep, that's why we must be born again, okay, again, like other words, people were at one time um, born, but they fell asleep, I think, you know, I think that's what that might be a reference to, you know, born again, in spirit and water, in Christ, you know what I mean? And because uh, it's it's falling away. It's falling away bad. But I, I think it's more important, you guys, that we get into Jesus Christ, becoming a member of body. And it doesn't matter what's going on in the world, man. He's coming for us. He separated us. Okay? He didn't separate us to, uh, you know, leave us behind with the wickedness. But he did warn us not to be lukewarm. Don't be lukewarm about this. Okay, because this, this is a battle, you know, of wickedness. We're fighting against wickedness, evil, you know. And, if, and the more we're stepping up, standing up, and we're speaking up about it, we're making it known, you know. This is like turning the battle at the gate. We're turning the battle because now we're going, oh, yeah, we know you too. We know who you are, you know, and we're exposing them Okay, and the more of us that are doing it, it's going to turn the battle at the gate. The Lord's going to take us out of here. We know that's coming. We don't have to worry about a date. We know the season. We know this is, this, this is it. Let me get out of here, you guys. I got to go get some gas, and uh, 
wash my windshield and head down the road, man. Who knows? Could be today, you know. But uh, anyhow, if I get a chance later on, I'll be doing a live video. I enjoy doing those live videos more than these recordings because it gets us all together, you know. But anyhow, God bless you guys. I love each and every one of you. In Jesus Christ's name.